Hi YouTube, I'm Ayman, and welcome back to one of my auto repair videos. In this video, I'm going to show you how to bleed the inverter cooling system for a 2004 to 2009 Toyota Prius. Uh, so before we begin, uh, we should note that first off, the inverter cooling system is different than the main uh, or the engine cooling system, which is right here. This has its own reservoir or expansion tank, and this is the inverter cooling system's in, uh, 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 reservoir or expansion tank. So why would you want to bleed the system? So the reason that you might want to bleed the uh, system is maybe you replaced a, a part like the water pump or one of the hoses or maybe the radiator. The reason that you want to bleed the system is because when you replace these parts, air bubbles uh, uh, may form in the process of replacing that part. And air bubbles pose a huge problem for cooling systems because what, if there are air bubbles in the system, as the, as the system starts to work and starts to heat up, those air bubbles will expand and if we take a look at the reservoir or the uh, expansion tank, as the air bubbles expand, it's going to push coolant upwards. And as that coolant goes upwards, it's going to go, it's going to overflow into this hose right here. And if I just take this out of its socket right now, you'll see that it's just the hose that leads outside. It's, so when the coolant goes here, it's just going to drip onto the floor. And we don't want that to happen uh, because, uh, especially for the inverter, because we don't want the inverter to be damaged or to malfunction. All right, so enough talk. So let's get to actually bleeding the system. So first off, we want to note this valve right here. This is the bleeder valve. There's a hole in the center. And we want to remember that this is a closed system, which means that it's going to be pressurized. So before we begin, uh, just make sure that you don't have the cap here for the reservoir unscrewed, because if it's unscrewed, that means the, that it won't be pressurized anymore. And when we open this uh, bleeder valve, the coolant is just gonna flow out. Uh, it's just gonna flow out because of gravity and because of pressure. So just make sure that this is closed right now. And what we wanna do is you wanna take a number 10 socket, like we have here. And this is a number 10, uh, I guess you would say bolt, but not really a bolt uh, or a fixture. Put it on. And what you want to do is you want to just uh, loosen it until you can unscrew it by hand. Or not unscrew, but loosen it by hand. So right now, or you should be able to un unloosen it by hand. Uh, loosen it by hand. So you can see that you're able to twist it. Alright, so what you want to do next is you want to take a hose. Uh, a small hose that is able to fit onto uh, this end right here. The reason we have this on a screwdriver is because this hose is a bit too thin. We have to expand it. And then what you want to do, you want to fix that hose onto the bleeder valve. Make sure it's secure. Alright, so the next step is to take the end of the hose that's open. And now, uh, make sure we hold this close. You want to unscrew the cap. Okay. And then just feed it, in, feed it into the reservoir. And next step. So basically, our, the way that we're doing this is, so we have to make sure that this stays in. The way we're, that we're trying to do this is basically, all the air bubbles are going to come out of this opening, as well as the coolant. And as it comes out of this opening and into the reservoir, the air bubbles will escape, but the coolant will still be in the reservoir. And as that cycle continues, then only the coolant will be left after a few cycles. So the next thing we're going to do is turn the engine on, because then the pumps will start running, and then the flow will start moving. and slide this down. All right, so uh, when bleeding the system, we're going to be turning the ignition on, but we're not gonna be turning the engine on. So in this car, turning the engine on would be pressing the power button uh, while you have your foot on the brake pedal. So when you're trying to turn the uh, ignition on, you only wanna turn it to uh, setting two. Because that would be, no, you want to press it twice because that would uh, set it to the accessory mode. So things like uh, the radio and the pumps will start working, uh, but the engine itself won't turn on. So right now we're going to do that. We have the key uh, in the console right now. So we're just going to press the button twice without putting our foot on the brake pedal because that will start the car. One, two. You can see everything turns on, all the accessories, but not the engine. Okay, you can also see the energy monitor too, It's cool. Alright, so we're back at the front, and just look at this hose right now. So there's already coolant 
uh, flowing through and you can already see air bubbles so right here right here so I'm gonna loosen this right now so that the flow uh, starts okay and there you can see you can see the air bubbles as well as the coolant uh, redirect into the reservoir and as they go into the reservoir those air bubbles will separate from the coolant and they will come out naturally and then only the coolant will be left just look at all those tiny minuscule air bubbles just leaving so maybe I need, just in case I'll shine it okay I don't see any more air bubbles but just in case we'll keep holding it so normally when you uh, completely drain all your inverter coolant and then refill it it may take you a longer time to completely bleed it because there might be more air bubbles in our case it only took like 15 seconds because when we were replacing the inverter uh, coolant pump we used a uh, hose clamp like this uh, I guess you can get them at Harbor Freight for $8 uh, for a set just mentioning that uh, and we also injected some coolant into the system using a syringe Oh, I didn't know there was coolant in this, uh, in this already. Uh, and so in our case, it took less time for us to bleed our system. If you want to avoid the hassle of having to bleed the inverter coolant system, uh, just use airlift like my dad did. He already did it like twice, I believe. Uh, just keep in mind that you can't uh, use the same method for having to avoid bleeding for the regular engine. Uh, it may work for inverter coolant system, but it won't work for the regular system. To uh, to refill it without having to bleed it. Alright, so it looks like now the inverter cooling system is done. Uh, we're going to wrap up now by removing this hose. And it's going to have a bit of leakage and that's why you have the uh, paper towel under. And then we're going to uh, let the rest of it flow into the coolant tank. And then after that we're going to make sure that the rest of the coolant... Uh, we, we're going to add some more coolant until it goes to the full line. I'll show you what it looks like after because of the glare of the light. But right now, okay, yeah. so the full line is right about here. Okay. So you can see that the coolant is the pink, the pinkish liquid that you can see right here. And this is where the full line is. From here, you can see where the low line is, like right here. And when I, when I was asking my dad about what we're doing after, he joke, we, we joked about how uh, low and high they're basically the same level, as opposed to like with this radi with this uh, reservoir. Low is like all the way down there, like right here, and high is somewhere up here. So low and high up here. So very big difference. But right now, let me just show you what we're gonna do. So after we take this off, we're gonna tighten it, but we're gonna do it off camera. So just finagle this off. takes a decent bit of strength because this is this was widened remember because our hose wasn't quite big enough okay now we're going to let it seep out take this out you're probably gonna wipe out the radiator after I mean the inverter after and uh, and then we're gonna add some coolant we have our injector right here our syringe and we're gonna shine a light uh, I'm sorry if you can't see actually you can't see it I can see it from here all right so you can see where the level is so we're gonna slowly inject it and I, I think that's it actually that I think that pink line oh wait no that's not it hmm. okay and if it's too much then we can just actually draw it up with the syringe, so it doesn't matter. Alright, so we're gonna draw out a bit of coolant because as you can see, it's just above the notch right here. Uh, it's okay to be just a bit under the full line, but not. it's not okay to be uh, over the full line. So just draw a bit. Wait, I have to make sure, okay. This is all the way, and then we draw it. All right, so we draw some coolant out, dump it into our cup, and let's see, still not quite, just a bit, one more, maybe.
Okay. I think it's at the full line right now. But just just be cautious. Alright, so it looks like everything's good to go. Looks at the right level. And uh, while I whip this up, I'm gonna wrap this up. So I'm Edmund, thanks for watching. I just showed you how to lead the system uh, using a very cool method. Uh, do the use of hoses and turning on the engine. Uh, actually, not turning on the engine, I, I might add, just turning on the ignition. Uh, but in the end, it's very cool. I actually learned a lot from th doing this video, uh, just as I, uh, you guys learned from watching this video. So I'm Ayman, and thanks for watching. Please like, comment, subscribe, look at videos, look at other videos on I and Ayman, especially the videos on the Toyota Prius, because recently I've been doing a lot of videos on this car. They, we, we have a lot of things to get done on it. I think we finished most of the things that we actually have to do on actually have to do on it. And I'm uh, starting and jumping over my words because it's a bit late at night. Uh, so I guess it's good that we're wrapping up. So signing out. Peace. Oh yeah, don't forget to put the cap the cap back on actually. <laughs> so unlike unlike uh, this cap, this is just a simple uh, has uh, ridges around it. Or threads, so you can just screw it back on. You don't have to twist or do any special movements on it. And uh, also, while I'm here, remember to check out our video on how to bleed the engine right here, the regular engine. And I guess that's it. Good night.